the absolute honest, thoughtful answer to that is right now I, I, I really don't know. Uh, what I do know is the data they compiled is, is extensive and it's very comprehensive and it's, it, it's, it's very academically data based. It's, it's not philosophical in a lot of ways. It's, not, it's certainly not political in a lot of ways. Um, we have plenty in that recommendation to evaluate, plenty of concepts to evaluate. Uh, you're right, there does seem to be a moderate gravitation toward consumption taxes, but, but in that is the principle of taxing outputs instead of inputs. All the economists, regardless of whether or not they're considered from the liberal side of the stance or the conservative side, have said that uh, the taxation of inputs is a retardant to, to recovery and is a retardant to, uh, to prosperity. The taxation of outputs uh, is not. And, and, and out of all the taxes, if we're going to have to pay them, that's the consumption tax is the only one that the taxpayer decides when and how much they, they pay. Um, probably the most hated of the taxes are where you're taxed and you don't even have income or, or, or anything uh, to, to show for having to pay it. The property tax seems to be the one that, uh, that, that most people um, uh, loathe the most because if, with no profit or no income, it's still due or you're going to lose your property in our society. So uh, sometimes you don't want to fix what's not broken either. Uh, we just went to 49th out of 50 states as far as tax burden on our citizens at the state level, not the local level, but the state level. There's only one state that imposes uh, less taxation on a per citizen basis than Georgia. And I think, I'm not sure of this, but I think that's Alaska and I believe that's because they actually pay you to live up there because of the pipeline and the oil reserves. So that, that's a, to me, that's a, a critical measuring stick. We, we, um, we, we do not burden our citizens near as much as all of our sister states in this great country. Does that indicate to you then that perhaps we don't need, as you mentioned, to, bro to fix something that's not broken? Maybe there's not really a, necess a necessity to move towards uh, you know, revising the tax That's budget. why we have such an open mind about this. And uh, not to make a political statement or draw a contrast, uh, we're, we're not going to consider a 150 page and probably a, a thousand page treatise on, on taxation in an overnight manner and just vote on a bill because we have to vote on a bill because we said we would. Uh, that's the reason there's still lots of analysis, lots of evaluation, and looking at the comprehensive package. You know, everybody can pick out one thing they don't like or they do like that's in this comprehensive approach. Uh, all the way down to is there going to be a sales tax on Girl Scout cookies, as absurd as that may sound. Well, certainly we don't want to create a subculture of, of uh, chilling the sale of Girl Scout cookies, uh, especially as that uh, relates to, uh, to charitable outreaches and so forth. But philosophically, that's a consumption tax. So there is much consideration on a point-by-point -point basis. Once you understand all of the prongs of it, you still have to bring all those spokes together into a wheel that runs as an, as an analysis. And that's the comprehensive uh, approach here. And uh, I'm personally not near ready that, and I'm, I'm not sure anybody else in this General Assembly has had the time or done their homework, so to speak, enough to, to, uh, to deal with this in a comprehensive way. And it will be evolutionary in, in a way because our, our tax code arose out of an agrarian society, an agricultural society. Primary, most of our tax law was promulgated back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. And we, we don't we live in the 30s and 40s and 50s anymore. We live in a world economy, uh, 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 an, an, an electronic economy, if, if you will, with very few, if any, geographical boundaries. And we really haven't kept up. I think we've become obsolete in a lot of ways. So that's part, again, of the academic evaluation of this and with hopefully not creating the individual prejudices of maybe the three or four hundred individual matters that are in this uh, recommendation. So that's a challenge. Uh, I can't speak with direct uh, knowledge from times before 2000, but uh, I'm told by the, uh, the economists that uh, having a situation where your revenues have declined something like 23 percent in three years and dealing with that on a budgetary basis uh, is, is, has never been replicated prior to the Great Depression. So we have some 
serious, serious challenges to get through this budget year. And we'll have to do so without any, uh, without much assistance at all from the federal government. We don't have any of the stimulus funds coming to supplant our obligations. And we all agree, no matter what uh, philosophy of the government side that you're on, that uh, that there are there are certain core missions of government, and uh, the biggest one of those is education. That we have a constitutional obligation to provide Georgians, and uh, so we'll be weighing every possible efficiency that we can, and still provide the necessary services, healthcare, education, and uh, and um, protection to our our, our citizens. Representative Larry O'Neill is the majority leader in the House. Thank you so much, Representative O'Neill. Thank you.